Here with Fifth Flaren. Fifth, how are you doing? And what do you think about this matchup here? There was a, a, a lot of uh, a lot of you on the panel there favoring only everyone favoring TSM. You, you gonna double down on that? Yeah, uh, I, yeah. I mean, I don't understand how G2 actually left Dust Two in the map pool. So I, I don't know. Everyone. Yeah, it's actually, what's really weird is it seems like so many teams that used to be good on Dust2 have kind of stopped playing it, but you're right, TSM are probably still one of the best teams in the world yeah. at it. Uh, maybe they just think this is the free fall map, anybody can be pretty good on Dust2 and, you know, we're feeling confident, we've got the strength for it, we're gonna try and do it. They're gonna start on the terrorist side, and TSM on that CT side, they've got the USPS, and it is a deadly weapon, specifically on Dust2, they're such a long range, those blocks are hard to get close with, so looks like they're gonna go for a very explosive play on Catwalk here. Oh, it's gonna work out, we might not have a lot of time to talk here. It's a minute and ten seconds, and already the grenade's raining in, and here comes the push. Sipnik's looking for the opening shot, he's gonna get one there, Cajun's gone, second headshot for Sipnik, and he's gonna get a chance to reload, Kerrigan picking off one, and there's the USPS in action, just they can't close the distance with the Glocks, Kerrigan picking up one more headshot, and Jacob gonna be last man left, Kerrigan to shut it down with the triple headshot, and that will be TSM picking up the pistol, and we are off to a very swift beginning. Yeah, that's actually a very, um, it's a rough uh, strat for G2 to actually, uh, Pull off because they only had one flashbang to just cover up the initial when they the initial push onto catwalk. But the thing is, TSM having the USBs, yeah, they get flashed, they push back a little bit, but again, they it's long range, so they have plenty of time to just be able to back that down by the time to get into the bomb site. They need to at least have like a B split or an A split there, at least like maybe two come out, sneak out, long flash, back to flash. Something could have, I mean, maybe they they were also all focused on the catwalk, so, you know, TSM didn't have to look anywhere else. I think yeah. they, they did the math quickly and realized that everyone was going to be there. Now it's almost all taken. Like down shot, which is a big indication. Smoke. There's a lot of people who could op on this G2 team, but um, right now it seems like maybe they're going to have Fox do it. Yeah, and I mean, I was going to see, he did not get, well, they only got one frag, so... Um... I think they actually decided to have Fox on that because he, he I think this is the, his best map when he actually ops. Yeah. Back even dating back in when he was playing for kick, uh, you know, playing versus these guys, especially on Fox with the op, he used to be very good on this map. He was positioning, you know, pushing aggressive cap while getting that kick and then fall back. Uh, with the P90, he's playing a hell of a lot, and getting the double cage and picking up one as well, but Mike Hill doing great work. Expensive for TSM, see if they can get another kill, they'll overwhelm Divine, and now the Danish side definitely slipping up a lot here, and G2 gonna see if they can actually bring it all the way home, that would be a big turnaround here for the underdog team, Rain, Mike Hill coming with a triple kill, looking for a little bit more, worried. Gonna be the refrag there, Carrigan charging in, he's got a bullet, spots out the pistol, Mike Kennedy in the corner, looking for the shot, Carrigan oh, goes no. down, it's the ace, Mike Kennedy picks it up, and that's G2 coming right back in, what a round here for the Swedish player, that's huge. <laughs> yeah, I mean, getting the getting the ace there with the tech 9, I'm so surprised they didn't get that kill with the M4 there, oh wow. A lot of bullets, and almost none that's of them hit at the end there, Smoke. one tech 9 and a bit of a dream I guess. That was a stunning Going line from Mike Kilele. That's the way Going you want to start if you're playing what uh, might at the moment be the best team Good in the world. Day. Third round is coming up here, and the Danes maybe not a big side effect here. Three Deagles, he set 75, they're not going to get the third round. I actually don't quite agree with this guy, though. They, they end up losing out. They, they know, well, they know they're going to have to double save anyway, but at least make sure that you have someone to work with. Because, you didn't, yeah, you can end up saving the next round, but... The round after that, you're not gonna have enough money for, you know, everything that you may want, an op, maybe all the grenades, you can't afford that. Yeah, and some of the grenades are really important. We've seen how important the uh, grenade and Molotov combo at long has been lately. NIP started doing that a lot with, you know, Molotov and uh, Longhouse, which is exactly where uh, G2 are coming out now. So if you don't have those in, well, not the next round, but then the one after that, you might be in some trouble. So far, Carrigan has gone down, not too much damage smoke. being returned, and we'll see if Cajun can find somewhere to play around with that. Oh, that would certainly be very helpful right now. Back. Yeah, and, I mean, the smoke. idea is when you have, uh, like, when you can have You're someone long distance back. having the, the scout, and then you want to find them, that just to, like, clear up. Oh, 
Oh, Dupree and Devon get the kill even up. They threw a smoke that wasn't covering everything and then they just run it to run by anyway. Michael Eddie might have this all on his own. Already, but Dupree with a nice hit for us. Taking him down, Michael Eddie clicking away, gets one. Finally goes down to Device, but take him out. You don't want to go for it. Nine seconds left, he jumps right down, he gets headshot by Device. Oh no, it's down to four health and a triple kill here on the man we just saw his highlight video. I don't know if he's been out running in the rain before we started <laughs> this, but that was uh, that was a nuts round from him. Yeah, I mean they took a gamble with the Deagle buys. They, you saw there. I mean it, it really paid off, and G2 with uh, basically no time to work with at the end, and Jacob just had to basically just drop down to his death. Grenade out. And Michael later did not have to peek that though. He could have just taken a bomb and planted it. Instead, he, he wanted to take the duel and he ends up, you know, he, he, he got punished for it. Laying down smoke. Maybe the the extra confidence from the ace, you know, feeling like we're fired up, we're ready to do this. Now, TSM back in the game. Not the best buy here, and I kind of actually kind of see why G2 will want to buy here, just to try and see if they can shut them down early. And they're on the terrorist side, so it's less of a risk, wouldn't you say? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I mean, you can see there on, on G2's, uh, and they only have Thanks this one flashbang again. And c considering the position they have, actually Fox is just out of catwalk, just taking a peek. I would love to see the, the same strat, kind of. They don't, do they have a smoke in mid? They don't, they're just walking out. Oh, yeah, Dupree might be in trouble. He's got no grenades, so he can't really get out of this corner. Michael in the first shot. He's getting back around. He's gonna go for the charge here. Cajun hitting a headshot. For the terrorist side, Device hiding in the corner, spraying furiously. Couldn't see a thing. Perfectly timed flashbang. And Rain is gonna end up taking him down. Bomb being planted. Two bus, three should they be going for this right now? They look like a team that's going to try and see if they can get the retake here. I guess if they can get an early kill and they are going to take down Jacob. <laughs> covering up a dark No, no one is coming. Rain in the back lines here doing the damage, but KG hitting one more headshot up for a triple that's kill now. They're the going to almost line up a Carrigan. Did he just pre fire that corner? Yeah. What on earth is going on? This this match seems like it's starting when on sort of a level where most matches finish. Yeah, and just looking at it, so I mean, look at the scenario we've had, right? So we had TSM win the pistol, G2 won the the force buy, then TSM wins their force buy, and then again now G2 just ends up winning their force buy. And one of the main issues there for G2 is that they can actually just kept on peaking the. Uh, be it, be it, be it, be it, be it, you didn't have to keep it. He goes down, it ends up to go down too, because he was just talking about, like, should they really go for this? But he gets an initial pick, yeah. Two and three, you go for it. Right, so just enough time, and I mean, yeah, you... Making that work, taking a little bit too aggressive with the early peak there. Device hiding in the corner, he's gonna be caught by Fox and Rain. Cajun, not really afraid in the middle, and he's gonna be a little bit careful. You only have one on one person right now. This should be one of those cleanup rounds where CSM can start to build sort of a very basic economy for themselves. Michael Ellis is on the head drop as well. So probably gonna be 4 1 here, mid air headshot. What's the plan now for G2? How can they get back in? Well, they do have a lot of money. We can actually see, potentially see an off on Fox's side, and yes, we will do just that. So now it's just about, well, you know, for the first five rounds of the game, we haven't really seen any default rounds. We haven't really seen anything at all. And yeah, double double off coming in. Uh, so I would just love to see a regular default round here from, from uh, G2, because especially now when TSM have two ops. Look at that. Right, Fox Going opening up, back. taking down to definitely a strong Going start through. here. If ever there was an opening frag you'd want uh, to land on uh, someone here on, on TSM, it'd probably be device going down. Mike Lillick does get refragged by Dupree with an AWP, which is something that we've seen every once in a while. It seems like Dupree has sort of a, you know, fantasy of becoming like a star opera. So whenever he sees the shot, you know, he's going to try and take it. Jacob hasn't actually killed anyone yet, but I'm not sure that's, you know, necessarily him underperforming. Maybe just the fact that he's been, he's been in some weird situations, I think. Yeah, I mean, throughout, like I say, like oh I said God, before, man. throughout this the first five rounds, it's just been very unorthodox play from, from both uh, teams. So, uh, going I'm sure it's gonna get, get going. They can make this push work, then having Jacob in the back middle back. is gonna be worth its weight in gold, because whoever rotates through the middle back. is gonna have to deal with him before they can do anything else. But first, they gotta get through KB. No one's coming catwalk, so he's got a lot of time to shoot down here. Shots down, Fox holding him. Now it's back into a three versus three. Putting up a couple of grenades and Cajun very careful about what's happening over at Catwalk while Jacob going out into the middle, taking down Sipic. Strong kill there and bringing it back in favor. 
two at least for the moment. Cajun's still up here, and he's going to take one more kill. No kill the double. And Dennis, last man left. Cajun sees it coming. It's going to be the triple as well. Nice hold. No damage at all taken on him. And um, could they have done more to you to stop Cajun up there, or was he always going to be in that good of a position? No, they should. As soon as uh, Jacob actually got the kill on to um, Fox early on, yeah, Jacob actually got the kill in the in-city spawn, I, I believe it was on... Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. As soon as he gets that kill, the G2 members should just... They should storm the Abe offside. Yeah, they, they know that Cajun B is there because he got the first G4 uh, offside onto Fox. But yeah, you need to just form that guy now, because you know that seat spawn is completely empty. <laughs> Cajun not uh, missing a step here, dropping the bomb at top mid. Here's the Rama, uh, the Rama here with the uh, Rama. Almost no armor on uh, anybody, and Device also chiming in. Stumbling a bit there. Device with a double kill, and Device might get in there. Two or five at the moment. And, um, I don't know. It seemed like there was a lot of training going on in the beginning, but... All things considered, we are up to six and one scoreline here. I mean, our TSM at a point where they're they're getting too much control over the game. I would re yeah, maybe soon, but then again, I mean, the G2 rounds that they have actually won and also lost has been extremely close. But yeah, it's getting to the point now where <clears throat> when you have the TSM, especially, we're talking about how good they are on level two. If they get a, if they get so many rounds uh, early on on the on the CT side, they're just gonna run. Fox back to Orping, blind shot through the middle, not going to connect with anybody. In the meantime, very aggressive. Michael is going to be on cap already. He's a so fast, uh, really early in the round. He's taking that cap position. Not to get a lot of control before you try and do it. So, right now, they're at least learning something about the uh, the Danish setup here. And just looking at positioning of TSM, if they if the G2 actually decides to just push out Catwalk here, it's going to be a very good situation for him. Laying down smoke. Yeah, Cajun, potentially the only one to stop them. He's going got a Molotov, but usually that won't cover all of Catwalk. People are going to keep running anyway. At least if they realize he's going to be alone. Moving back to long might be a little bit safer for him. Looking for the early shot, but the flashbangs are going to help out. Are they going to try and do it? Jumps! Now he can't easily refrag that, so you see Cajun, he wants to sort of go, but maybe a bomb plant here for free for G2. Now they have to hold it, Dennis, with a stunning kill, and Cajun's going to be going down and having to four versus five retake here. Bomb is drop, Kerrigan taking up Fox, and that brings it back into a four versus four. They're still holding long. Deploying flashbang. Kerrigan is Michael gets the one kill. Dupree going down. The vice around the corner. Nice work from Rain. Uh, crouching in on that angle, and Carrigan goes down to get him. So really solid work. That looked like a well organized round from G2. Yeah, I mean it was a great gamble since they just had again just had every everybody from G2 on Catwalk. Just that one initial flash. Uh, smoked, smoked off Catwalk as well, and just, you know, that last flash that just blinded Cajun B that forced him to back off. So that just left him to be with the entire site, and then it didn't really help the Cajun B at all to run down. But yeah, it was a good, it was a good gamble in terms of the tactics wise. I wonder if they actually know that TSM likes to play like this, because they're very generic with you when you have one off, one off a car, one CT spawn, and they, maybe they saw uh, Zipdex even in mid, just speaking, and they just decided to go. Well, I, you know, it's one of those teams still because they are, you know, that, that new lineup and because of the different language barriers that you always wonder a little bit about how it's going to turn out, how much focus they have on anti-striding and all that kind of thing. But I talked to Mike Lele earlier and he said he was, he was feeling very confident on a bunch of maps. Um, so maybe they have been able to put in some, some, some work before the major here. Right now they're only four lines behind, so still a lot can change. In this first half, the not in middle too much longer. Bombs in upper dark though, so this is looking like a classic beast split, isn't it? Yeah, they just threw a uh, beast split smoke out to see the spawn, but uh, that's just for a fake. You see there, if you just look at the minimap, that actually every single beast you remember is moving into the towards the B tunnel. Maybe just that to be a, a little T. Uh, oh, Dupree jumping the gun down in the tunnel. He's going to end up going down the right in the corner. No chance at all. Mike Lele with a double opening and Dennis picking up six and it's down to Carrigan and Cajun B here. Two versus five. And there's no there's a point in even trying no. at this point. Even if they got an early kill, they wouldn't win this round. No, no, no. I mean, the, the initial thought is if you're, if you're CT and... Uh, the terrorist gets a bomb down. If it's a three on two, maybe even a four on two, and you're cl and you're nearby the bomb site. If you do get the initial pick, then then yeah, yeah, maybe you can decide to go for it. But when they're all the way over at A along, I mean, by the time they even get to B, it's it's too late. So 
They give up mid control and fall all the way back into the B bomb site. They have Cajun playing. Oh, sorry, they have um, there's a Dupree close up on the box there. Terrorists win. That's that's the earliest they know that there's push coming. B. Yeah. They've almost no intel about what's happening on that terrorist side. Um, is that how those two usually plays out? Somewhat, especially when when they actually fake the, just the one initial smoke into uh, CT spawn. That's actually a really good play because what happens is Zipex will, will read them on calling. So okay, CT spawn smoke, watch out for B split. That's the like device to be out. more passive, so you wouldn't actually know to go and fight in mid. You would back, back. fall back towards B, and then you don't really have any control of the map anymore because you're you're expecting a B split. But then all of a sudden you have four members come out from B, and then. You know, when Dupree went down the way he did, it's really not that much of the device can do. Like maybe, maybe you can get one, but then that's about it. Yeah, probably end up going down. So oh six, three, and G2 bringing you back round for round here, leaving TSM in a bit of an awkward position, economically speaking. One Going M4 smoke. in play, and one AWP, which they saved from last round. A couple of deagles picked up, smoke. something that Danish people seem to oh. like a lot. Uh, let's see if they can make it work. Yeah, they can make it work. He hits that shot, but doesn't get the kill, he missed the next one. He's running out of time, he has to hit these shots, and now they're gonna overwhelm him. He I'm can't stay alive any longer. Assuming they are dropping a bit low, but they just can't get the kills through. Yeah, KJB with a very bad positioning, I would say, especially knowing that he was the only one with the weapon on the B bomb side. He needs to take a much more aggressive peek, so by the time they do end up coming in, that you have the pistols just basically guarding uh, KJB with, with their lives. So they can't even fall back, you know, they can't go to shooting him back to back, for example. So they can all the way back in, uh, on the B bomb side there. Then in missing the initial shot, it's just, it's game over already there. But yeah, he ended up making four shots then, you know, by that other time, you know, got into the B bomb side. It was already too late. Terrorists win. Well, Zip getting a bit of an exit frag at least, and um, I guess that's the, that's the best we can say really here for TSM, who are now up to only a two-round lead, so it, it really looked at least to me like TSM was sort of running away with the game, but I feel like now G2 reasserting a little bit of control, Michael Elliott, 11 kills, he is, he is ready. Yes, and uh, we were talking about that before, about the scoreline, uh, the first initial five, six rounds, it was... A very odd awesome game. Where they one run, uh, one run, and then ended up losing the other one. So the economy wasn't really the best. Uh, now you know, G2, they have the money that they need. They have all the nades. You know, they have the off farm. So this one, you see that the flashback. Especially now, we have the fight. Devastating grenade, but Cajun gonna pick up one kill each there with the pistols. Dennis coming back into it. No head armor, so Sipix goes down very quickly, even to the Glock then. And back into a 3v3, and because Rain and Dennis are kind of low on health, this is a bit scary. Unfortunately for TSM, Carrigan went down on Catwalk or in the middle really early on, and he had that M4 and armor, which now Device has picked up. Kind of wish he would maybe trade with Cajun. Capri also stealing an AK somewhere. So TSM, this would be one of those really devastating rounds where if G2 lost it, they know they should have won it, and TSM are going to be feeling really good. Yeah, G2 now it's really important that you stick together. You don't you don't just spread out. You need to stick all three together and just take the duels, you know, as a team. Because if you end up spreading out, you're just going to end up losing mana for mana. Because look at how TSM are being played. Dupree is going like, lower, and then you have Divas Cat. So they they have basically a crossfire there. So, but it's a good a good idea now for G2 to be pushing out long. And they put up that smoke, and this is what was the bit more than the edge, and he hits the headshot on Rain, and looking for a bit more, actually yeah, almost killing Dennis as well, and backup's being called for, he is 16 oh, seconds, trying to get the bomb down, KJ jumping and shooting, and not hitting the shot just yet, and Dennis is the last man left, very low on health, but no one up in that bomb sign, Mollusk of raining in as well, Cajun with a really good kill, and gotta be a little bit careful, the fire doesn't spread, but looks to be safe. So, a very, very upsetting round for G2. They kind of stuck together. Are they lying? Because that's the second time we've seen G2, I think, actually lose a round due to that smoke on the cross over at long yeah. being incomplete. Yeah, uh, I mean, that smoke in, in particular is probably one of the most important smokes of on the on Dust2. And you see, it's still, uh, to this day, yes. a lot of teams actually failing that smoke again and again and again. Let's and go, it's just a few rounds. You just have to make sure that when you come through, you have some time before you're going to going to serve before you go live. I'm going to go to that smoke section. Uh, I'm going to go to that smoke section. I'm going to go to that smoke section. I'm going to go to that smoke section.
Dexter, he's there, he's taking down Dennis as well, and this is a clean up round. Three people dead already for Gigi before we even get into talking about anything that might be going on. So now it's just a to get them staying alive with as many weapons as possible here. They've got the double, they have a lot to lose in a round like this. Fox and Jacob, uh, well, Jacob's already gone, so just Fox, he could still do some damage. Yeah, and I mean, it's, it's, it's one minute left, there's no way to no. even save his weapons though. Um, hunting down Dupree. He is very good with it, but Cajun had a sneaky position there. So both the AWPs stay alive on TSM's side as we move into an 8 4 scoreline and a 13th round coming up. Luckily for G2, because they had a bit of a run, they still have money to buy even without the bomb plant here. Yeah, it's just uh, Dennis that looks to be in uh, somewhat bad shape. He doesn't have other nades though, and uh, yes. they, they don't have the right. Okay, there we go. Yeah. So we do see a, a pretty decent buy coming in from G2 here. Yeah, a lot of black and some smoke, so it's probably all they need. Going for a bit of a default split, it seems. Not as fast as they were earlier. I mean, you saw Michael Lele charging up. Or maybe uh, a bit of a slowdown here Flashback. on the terrorist side. <laughs> Michael Lele, speaking of which, Dark Star stands up right back. into the crosshairs of the ice and ends up going down. Very unfortunate start indeed. If they lose this round. The question is if TSM will, will pick up the remaining. I feel like it'd be a bit of a cruel turn of events as they've done such a good job already. Yeah, and for G2 now, when Michael Lele actually went down there, it's just, he's just standing there holding, holding middle. You should actually have a G2 player just rush up cap anyway, so just clear it so you have more, more control, because then you can do so much more with it. You know, now you actually see the initial, the run They're going to try and go for the device. They don't have a lot of grenades to do this with, and he's got as well as the AWP in the back line. He's up going down to fight. He's gonna end up getting shot down by Dennis. A great headshot there from the AK. Now alone, and three TSM members left alive. Sipix trying to make a little bit of noise up there. The bomb will be He almost has to go aggressive. He waits inside. Yeah, they're gonna come and shoot him in the back. And I don't know. It's kind of hard to judge him too harshly for that one. Very yeah. hard to win that. Yeah, no, not really that much to do. It's a good thing that GP actually got the fact, though. Uh, device. Missing the two initial shots, but ending is still ending up with the two kill and just basically uh, saving time for Sidnex to actually come up and help him. Ooh, bit of a sign there. Yeah, but, but that, was no not, that was not CS related. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> Get out of here! <laughs> the 14th <laughs> round is coming up. And there's a bit of a force going on here in GT. What do you think about this? I mean, this is not last round and a half, it's the second. I just feel like they, they need to get more rocks on the board, so they just took a gamble. And again, you see just that initial, just one smoke rain on rain and nothing else. I would love to see maybe rain not buy even a tech nine and just buy some the two more flashbangs perhaps. So they actually can try and take over cat. Because now you see, you, you do see the cat play, but they only have one smoke. They don't smoke. Have one yeah, so this is gonna get very tricky, in other words. Good flashbang up from six. Molotov might be a little bit too late. Now they're gonna get forced out here. Taking down one, getting closest rain, but he still goes down, and this final is definitely taken, but I'm not sure it's Fox, the last man left. One versus four, and um, yeah, they're just all hunting for him here. The animals, TSM's crowding him, and it's gonna be 10-4. 15th round coming up. So now that investment, they actually still have just enough to buy. So maybe that's uh, that was some good math done there yeah. by G2. I mean, one thing that G2 should know by now, even just if you watch some demos on Dust 2 uh, for TSM, is that Kenji B is probably one of the best players that actually has the off on the car. Like for the A long. He does such a good job there, you know, even if he gets flashed, he still managed to at least get one or two every single time. Uh, and especially if you don't even have a flashback. Up to Fox once again, he wins that battle in the middle. He hasn't even been doing that a couple of times, but then they can't really pick it up afterwards, even as they get the way supposed to be doing very well. Michael and they're picking up Kerrigan, trying to sneak him, and that is a bit of a change for TSM. Not a play they've been doing a lot, and some teams really do love pushing up a dark. Um, I think Envy, especially our uh, our team, they even go for double. Play. Yeah, and for G2 now, like you were saying, that you don't really have any control despite getting the entries. G2 actually have no control, they actually don't know what's going on, so the best, most of the times, I really hope that they, we do see a B split coming in here, but it needs to go fast, oh, because it's just about to go fast, oh, that's oh, 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 now they need to go, 
Yeah, I mean, Dupree, smoke. he had an AWP as well in this move. It's very hard to imagine how he could have brought that one off. But yeah, they are moving there, putting all the speed behind him. He's been trying to get the bomb is going down. And no saving here for TSM. They might as well try and go for it. And Zip in the corner going to end up going down. A good double kill there from Rain and Michael Elliott both. So 10-5 is an overall scoreline. Considering how this game played out, I, I I would have thought T2 could have got a bit more out of this. It looked like in the beginning, right, when they when they ended up winning the um, the anti eco, and then you know just TSM just wrecking dreams once more and just re um, we won that again. But yeah, it's, it's looking very grim for G2 now. You know, on us too, especially that they are very good CT, CT team. I think if we were to compare both sides for TSM, I think that you know their seat side is definitely better than their T side, but. That, do that doesn't mean that you know they're bad on, the, on their T side either. I think that this is going to be extremely difficult for G2 to even be able to get back into the game. If you had to sort of, um, you know, almost make a path for how they can get back in, I mean, what springs to mind for me would be winning a pistol and going straight to double orb. You know, my Fox and my Kill Elliot both shutting down. Is that is that a viable strategy? Do you think? Yeah, I mean, you see TSM. You see a lot of teams actually, especially on those two, having the two uh, the dual ops. You see NIP with Force and Alu. Uh, Fnatic with all of my and JW, uh, and it's actually really good because the map is so open and so there's a lot of long distance uh, uh, combat. So it would be kind of wise for G2. And if they don't decide to do that, one thing that I would love to see again is just don't be afraid. You have to put pressure on TSM because the thing is, they are very good at taking map control. And if you don't try to defend that in any single way, then TSM will just have a field day with you. Well, we do have a little bit of time left here before we go into the second half. About 20 seconds, so we'll see if G2 can uh, can make this one work. This time, they will have the advantage of the USPS. Um, TSM with Glocks maybe more. Hang on, what kind of round would you like to see out of them? A, a, a quick round here where they get close with the Glocks, or uh, are there, is there a different trick they could go for on the Danish side? I mean, generally on Dust 2, since it's so uh, since the, the, it's so many long distance uh, duels that you can get, you initially want to actually have a very fast paced missile round. Because if you keep on doing these long duels and just play defensive, it's just going to benefit the CTs. Because, like you know, like you're saying, before, this is what the the oh, speeds, they can just stand there. If they get a pick, you know, even a headshot, that's a one kill, right? So they need to be fast smoke. here. And you see here, carrying with actually double smoke or one smoke flashback. with flashman, sip, sip as well. As well, as well I'm going so. They've got device picking up the uh, rage boss build here. And Tech 9 and Dupree out on long. Fox is close, and Dupree hits a double headshot. And that's going to be Jacob and Fox gone. And a horrible start here to the second half for G2. Grenades rain on in. That smoke is still incomplete, but it's a little bit different if you don't have uh, more than a USP to try and kill people and you're that far away. Go down. They're going to gather up retake through catwalk. Rain finally hitting a headshot, looking maybe for more, but they're not even going to give him a chance to fight very much. They end up falling back, and Kid is picked up on both Rain and Michael Lilly, which is a bit odd for a pistol round. He's already got the double kill. Looking to see if he can make it a triple, and it will be all headshots for Dupree and an 11 5 scoreline. Yeah, I really love that strap from TSM. Like I said, very fast paced. They bought two smokes. One went down in the middle, and the other one was used to cover the, uh, the CT spawn uh, gap. And then they have two flashes that were just thrown out towards long, and they just took over so fast, getting the two initial frags. So help us out with the time. What's the smoke and do when they're pushing long and going for the A bombs? Right? Well, they had the day. It was an A bomb, right? We had two, two guys just dropping C side and rushing towards the cat as well. So in case uh, G2 was playing perhaps maybe as a catwalk or even just on the A bomb side, they just basically. It's basically a sandwich. Now the road back for G2 is uh, very much longer than it just was. 5 11 here. They've gone for the, the four stop. Still Fox without the armors, trying to get a little bit more money in. He said 75. No deagles in play, which is what we saw when the when TSM were on the CT side. Yeah, no scouts either. And this is a uh, this is a very tough buy from G2 since they don't have any long distance weapons. Uh, they just have to basically rely on having the full the A bomb side. They just have to block. And Mike Lillings. Drop for Michael Lillings so far, taking down device, and there might be more in store. He's still got a little bit of health, and simply because he's very very low at the moment. So four of us four. They've got a player out on long, and Jacob oh, might been be been realizing that there's nobody coming back. from there, although Sip is checking. Bob goes down now. He's going to be very hard. He's going to pick up one more kill. Harrigan with a headshot, and that's going to be the end of the round there. So it looked like maybe there was an opening, but um, 
Yeah, but when when you know that your opponents are already on the site planning the bomb for G2, that they should actually just save their their pistols and their armor, just hold, just try and actually get some extra kills. You don't have to actually push because the, the thing is what happened now is Go instead of time. instead of just saving go. the weapons, whereas you're gonna be left with you know uh, not a single pistol on, on this coming round, then eventually if you just end up saving that. Maybe you can we are a couple of kills away here from being at 13. Oh, definitely a very decisive scoreline. Oh, the grenade. No armor up there either. And it's gonna. Well, actually, the scout, I guess, saved him from the grenade. Some some small mercy there. And then it's gonna be the last man left here. One versus four. So now, I mean, this upcoming round is pretty much do or die time for G2, and um, I guess I guess we'll see what they've uh, what they've got in store for us. One off picked up there, so it's only going to be the single off. Yeah, and you see that actually Fox actually made a mistake there. He had five five thousand eight hundred fifty dollars. He had de decides to actually do buy the off, which is great. But he has to buy an armor and a head armor instead of getting you know getting the extra smoke grenade, which is going to be very useful. He doesn't really need the head armor because he has a and an armor. Keep that in mind in case it actually is something that he's going to need later on. It's definitely a very, very important thing, thing to point out. Head armor is not useful against AKs. If they shoot you in the face, you'll be dead anyway. AWP will be even more dead. Flashback. It's going to be still a minute and 20 seconds left here. And Dennis and Rain inside the B-bomb site. So no mid-control at all for Yeah, and I love what these guys are doing. They're playing so aggressive and just taking control of the map. In middle here, and a grenade on my grenade, dropping a bit low. See if they can actually make this work. Now they've got the and Molotov raining in as well, and Dupree spraying furious. Constance there picking up one kill. Dennis pushing through this is very nice. Dennis with a double kill. Now it's all up to the remaining players here for two of them. And nobody going down. Dennis gonna clean up the round. Triple kill for him, stealing the AWP. The timing for that aggressive push out of B bombs. I'm trying to explain just what happens if they're a little bit too early or a little bit too late with that timing because it seemed like it was almost perfect. Yeah, I mean, what happened there for TSM, they actually decided to double smoke down his CT spawn just to make sure that they, he wasn't losing the game. Yeah, so my guy actually didn't have any, any flashbacks. What he did the good there was that they actually had flashback one guy all the way back to B flash. Flashback, and was very close to the B entrance. So he just flashed out two and then, oh, sorry, Dennis was going by yeah. B. And he just ends up flashing out too. He gets the initial one in seat spawn. And just you know, it's a great hold by G2 and very good, very nice. I would say one of the rare times where giving up mid control ends up working anyway. Yeah. That's a very dangerous way to try and hold B. Uh, but the timing was flawless there. It's a very good counter shot that you're going to see here. Fox and Dennis, they. They end up stealing an AWP, and now they've got the double up set up, and it's a scout that's on Carrigan, so a little bit like Unless you eat headshots. Fox is ready and waiting, and a little bit scary, but Michael Ellis goes by to help him out. Carrigan is there with the one headshot. Now, Michael Ellis got to be careful. That scout you can jump and shoot with, so they've got to be respect that much at least. And the bomb is making its way up as well. Carrigan just dominating this A bomb slide. Nothing more than a scout. Are we really going to see one of these jumping shots? Carrigan not tempting it just yet. Look at how far away they are on E2. They've got to make their way out. a lot closer here. This is the they have to get. They can't allow TSM to get very difficult. Dennis making his way up as well. Michaeli gonna come. Rain is gone as well. And wow, this is definitely a disaster for the G2 team. Jacob, I'm not even sure he can survive the round. Great again, great round by TSM. Terrorists win. But Fox missed that initial shot. It was basically game over already because they just lost. All map control on the A bomb side, and even despite the fact that Jacob was still long, so they had the long control, they had seat spawn control. TSM only really had cat control, and you saw Dupree actually. He thought that they would uh, actually just end up saving, so he was already up in B tunnels. Uh, but then they they, he, they got to call that. Okay, yeah. Cool, but for my G2 there, yeah, yeah. having Fox actually missed the shot uh, just cost them the round completely. Throwing flashbang. 21st round is going to be rolling in here. Two M4s being picked up on G2 and a single Max 7 and Deagle and 5-7. That's what they've got to try and see if they can stop this TSM train. We did used to call them the freight train because once they sort of got going, they were really, really on to stop. And they seem to still have that, that kind of quality, it seems like. 
TSM's uh, anti eco kind of V2s, right? So you see the, the kind of a team play coming in from TSM in middle with three, two or three guys. They're just making sure that if someone ends up dying, there will always be a reverse frag. And Device is holding long for a push and KGB is holding. So you have the three guys, the core three guys in middle, they are the ones working. They're the ones making the plays, where the other two are just basically just holding the flags. Yeah, so no one can sneak up behind them if you try and go in the middle. Uh, even if you get a kill on someone, you might get re right. And you can totally can't steal a rifle either and run away, but which is kind of what TSM did to you, right? They stole some of those rifles. That made a big difference. Fox And this is looking like a bit of a slaughter. It's Dupree and Device. They're gonna pick up one kill each, leaving Dennis and Jacob left two. This is five at the moment. 30 seconds left, but obviously it's an easy round from here on out. Uh, he yeah, actually ended up missing the off shot, which is why he went down to Jacob with the Mag 7. But for Dennis here, again, he just needs to save his weapon, because just basing off of G2's money right now, they have nothing. And that, you know, this is make it or break it now. It's going to be 15 to 6 in favor of TSM. And, you know, there's no more mistakes that we make. I feel like it's hard to find a silver lining right now for G2. I mean, if we enter trying to I guess what we could say is that if they did make a, a nine round comeback into overtime here, then, you know, it certainly be one of the best comebacks in GSO major history. Yeah, especially versus a team like Solo, yeah. Team Solo Mid, which, you know, does do is arguably one of their best maps. Uh, so, yeah, it would be a, a huge uh, achievement for G2 if that actually ended up happening. I just don't see it happening, I'm sorry. But, uh,. I tried to stay positive here. You're not gonna follow me down no, this road. I'm not gonna try that. I'm, going to uh, right. I'm not going to shoot it over. I think it's gonna be a uh, game over here on the flashback. Round 22. You're usually so Throwing cheerful. I'm sorry. We've <laughs> been smoke. pretty much on point with the predictions so far. Ready to join you as well. The three is gonna be taking down Dennis Fox to go down and TSL. I mean. Smoke. There from G2 made a Maybe they have something that they could show us here. Some really good individual performances. Mike Kaleli really showing up. Dennis having some good rounds in as well, but it's just not been enough here. Two times in the TSM. Probably, if, if ever there was one, the, the favorite to at least make it to a grand finals here. Showing exactly why that is. Rain and Mike Kaleli left two versus three right now. See if they can stall this uh, victory for TSM just a little bit. Fear that he's making a little noise running in and he gets the kill, goes down. And, um, Michaelele, was that a blind shot through the smoke? It just might have been. I'm throwing smoke. Well, the bomb gets planted, and now it's Michaelele has a pretty decisive health advantage. And Cajun, on the other hand, has a Molotov and a flashbang, too. Let's see if he can get oh, he, he has to move a little bit quick. And Cajun just shuts him the down. Um, 16-6 victory, and that's going to be TSM moving forward. Yeah, and again, overall, very good performance by TSM. I mean, for me, they are the favorites to win this uh, this tournament. Uh, having such a great...